Welcome to the Watercolors Aquarium Gallery video series brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Today we're going to start a little series about one of the most iconic group of aquarium fish of all time. We're starting out with, we're going to talk about angelfish for a while. I think they are some of the most magnificent fish. I think, let me see, I'm going to rephrase that. Prove me wrong. <laughs> the most magnificent group of fish in the ocean. They're definitely majestic. Yeah, they definitely are. <laughs> using, and I'm very intentionally using that word. Right. Magnificent, That majestic. makes it hard to argue against you. Exactly, right? Um, well, there is a majestic angelfish, so that's like well, cheating. Well, you know. <laughs> Check one for the score. <laughs> so look for a whole series on uh, angelfish. Today, specifically, we're going to talk about the Quran angel. Which That's just one we're really excited about right now because the specimens we have in the store are just like show stopping every time I walk by them. They're beautiful and they're such fun fish to have around. Other than one major flaw, they have everything. Yeah. They are hardy, they are outgoing, they have amazing get to know you type fish personalities. Mm -hmm. The one downstairs in particular is like, he's really warming my heart because he, like, <laughs> he gets so excited about people now and he's yeah. like... Well, they're a really rewarding fish to work with and really any of the larger angelfish I think you could say this about. They are a little bit shy at first and you do have to earn their trust a little bit. Yeah. Um, but that's even more of an endearing thing because once they do get to know you, they're such a fun fish to keep and they are so personable. For sure. Yeah. For sure. They are exceptionally intelligent and that's why they learn to trust. Mm -hmm. They are some of the smartest fish in the sea. In fact, in one of our later podcasts, we'll get into some of the mimicry that happens with angelfish. And there are fish that mimic angelfish. And the only explanation people can come up with is because angelfish are really smart. Yeah. They're one of those fish that truly looks like at you, not just that there's a blob yeah. there. They're trying to figure you out at all times. So, Pomacanthus semicirculatus, mm -hmm. the Quran angelfish, a very common larger angelfish found all over the tropical South Pacific and pretty much most of the reefs. Uh, the juvenile form, they start out as a cleaner. So they clean parasites off of other, of other fish, like most of the fish in that genus, in the Pomacanthus genus. They have that classic cleaner coloration, the black body with some blue and white various patterns on them. Semicirculatus has little half circles mm -hmm. running up and down its body. They grow into something that focuses more of their diet on sponges and some corals, which there's their one flaw. Yeah. The big angels are, I'm not gonna say not reef safe because there's definitely some really cool experimentation that can be done with the types of corals that they are less and more likely to go after. Just don't experiment with a coral that you can't live without. <laughs> right, or an LPS coral, don't yeah. experiment with those. We already know that's not gonna work. <laughs> Yeah, I actually saw, um, just when I was doing a little research on this, um, somebody posited that the reason that the juvenile changed their coloration, partially because it, they need to have that cleaner indicator, but also because it makes it so that adults can defend territories better. They don't need to defend territory against a juvenile, but they do against another adult. True. Yeah. True. It is notable that the juveniles are actually more, less tolerant of conspecifics than the adults are. Yeah, because they got to settle in on that spot. They have that cleaning station, they have to defend yeah. it. Talk about diet, Charles. Uh, so, in captivity, you're going to be trying to replicate that diet as much as you can, at least in my opinion, for long-term health. Um, and there's some really nice prepared foods out there that are high in algae, sponge material, etc. Um, I would probably avoid a high protein diet. Um, I think that would cause them more problems long term. Than They're a true omnivore. Yeah. For sure. So you definitely want to give them that spectrum of variety. Um, and it's fun to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I personally like the algae foods to be higher in marine algae than spirulina. Yep. This is a fish you want to avoid carbon. You avoid the use of carbon when you're when you're keeping angels, any angels long term. But the pomacanthus of angels are very susceptible to hole in the head and lateral line erosion. Carbon is definitely a contributor to, contributor to that. I kind of, this is purely anecdotal. At some point we may do some scientific studies on it. I feel like spirit, the overuse of spirulina can also contribute to the whole in the lateral line erosion. 
Yeah. And there's nothing against replicating their natural diet anyway, and spirulina is a freshwater algae. There are amazing marine foods that use marine algaes in them. Yep. Yeah. For sure. And if I, I kind of agree with Ben on that count, though. Um, what I think it is, is so if you are looking at the literature, you'll see a term called puffas. It's highly unsaturated fatty acids. Spirulina yep. is a lot lower in it than marine algae. Mm. Sure. And at least with some of, the, not homocanthus, but at least with some of the tangs and other stuff we've had come in with problems, we've purposely been like, all right, let's focus in on those type of foods and right. give them a supplement that's high in that stuff. And you can reverse it sometimes. Right. <laughs> sometimes some of the scarring will be there. Some yeah. Of the um, Crying angels, they're big. They that are big fish. One thing that has to be accounted for. Scott Michaels references 135 gallon minimum size. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a six foot by 18 inch by 24 inch mm -hmm. tank. 20 inch, 24 inch tank, depending yeah. on you know who's manufacturing the tank. I think they get like 12 to 14 inches. 14 is going to be like yeah. pretty much maximum those guys, but that's. That's, That's a, lot yeah. <laughs> a lot of fish. Watch them with fish that mimic rocks. Their entire lifestyle is designed around picking at rocks. They're just so personable. Yeah. Like the one downstairs is yeah. getting comfortable enough with people where you can hand feed them. Aww. Very and that's cool. just so cool. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> do you guys know where the name Korean Angelfish comes from? No. I do. All right. All right. Well, at least I have an anecdote about it. And okay. I haven't been able to verify it, but it's an interesting story. So the story is that there is one that showed up in our markets that had what looks like Arabic writing, like as in from the Quran. And there was a specific phrase, and unfortunately I don't know it, I hope someone out there does, but that specific individual went for something like $6,000 and changed the name of the fish because it was such a mind-blowing thing to people. Wow. So it's the Quran angel after the writing in the Quran. Very yeah? cool. Very I thought cool. that was really interesting. Well, an amazing fish and can be a great addition to a larger tank with other large fish. They, they don't look like rocks. Yeah. <laughs> they don't look like rocks. They adapt readily to captivity. They eat well. There are sometimes captive raised ones available. Um, otherwise, they're a great fish. So, more information on this fish can be found on our podcast. Mm -hmm. Look for more YouTube videos on other angels. Yeah. That's a group of fish that we all love. And um, leave us a comment too. Uh, what's your favorite angel fish? You can't cheat and say freshwater, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And otherwise, have lots of fun and keep those hands wet.